Amen. Um, Congressman DeSantis, uh, uh, DeSantis, uh, Ron DeSantis of Florida, and, and I uh, introduced uh, a bill about two months ago uh, called the, uh, the 28th Amendment to the Constitution, which is very, very simple. It just says, Congress shall pass no law uh, on America that does not apply to Congress itself. Very simple. Uh, and uh, we're, we're pushing, trying to push that uh, as much as we can. It wouldn't just apply to Obamacare. Congress is constantly putting itself uh, with one set of guidelines. Think about the Stock Act. Amen. Um, you know, they, they, even with what was passed last year uh, regarding members of Congress being allowed to uh, still, uh, you know, play the stock market when they're getting insider information on, uh, you know, key industrial things that are happening uh, either through legislation or, or uh, through, uh, you know, executive action. Um, and plain and simple, members of Congress should not be allowed to play the stock market. They, if they have stock portfolios, it should be done in a blind trust. That's the way it's done at the White House. That's the way that Congress should do it. Right. So this bill, I think, is something that, uh, uh, you know, we should be pushing that Congress should live under the same laws that everybody else does. But um, as far as where the fight goes from here, I, I believe that they're going to end up postponing uh, key parts of Obamacare. And where the real fight is uh, next it is on the next uh, uh, the votes on the debt ceiling. Uh, we've got to also broaden that fight, I believe, uh, to go into major uh, spending cuts and mm -hmm. cutting the trajectory of spending that you know, we've been doing for the last decade uh, and uh, putting us on a glide path for a balanced budget. And then uh, the next big fight after that is the next election, and we've got to we've got to win back the Senate. That's the only chance we have of really uh, finally defunding uh, Obamacare. Mm -hmm. We do have a number of uh, uh, well, all the Senate Democrats on record voting against right uh, the bitter amendment voting against uh, delaying individual mandates. So they 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 own that now. Um, and and do. please listen to you know groups like uh, Freedom Works. Uh, on, you know, who, who to support in those primaries, too, because, you know, simply getting a, a Republican in office is, is only half the battle. Getting the right Republican in the office that's actually going to stand their ground and fight the fight is crucial and it's important. Amen. Yes, exactly. Uh, we have time for one more question, and I would encourage uh, folks on the call who weren't able to get their question asked, uh, tweet it to me. It's at mkibby. And I will try to answer as many as possible. And, and, and obviously, anybody that, that follows Freedom Works or myself on Twitter, um, we can have that conversation there, and, and, and hopefully, with millions of other people as well. Um, Whitney, one last question. Okay, great. And again, like Matt said, we have time for one more question. And after this question is answered, we have staff members here in the office standing by. If you're willing to press star three to donate, so we can continue to give you the resources and the things you need to battle fights like this and those we have in the future. But we've been asked this in different ways as well. How do activists communicate to their liberal friends, um, people who don't understand the economics, but they're seeing, you know, Democrats now push for a delay of the individual mandate. They know that, you know, in those red states where we have Democrats, the premiums are rising. How do they, in the face of a personal story, communicate why Obamacare is a bad deal? Maybe there's someone in their life who had cancer or different things. How do they communicate that? What are the best ways to do that? You know, I, I think that... Uh, Quite often, I almost feel like uh, I'm channeling uh, uh, progressive values when, when we talk about fairness. But but what 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 doesn't make sense about treating everybody the same under the law? I think I think fairness is a big issue. I think the fact that so many people have lost the health care policies that they depended on, even though President Obama promised them that they could keep the health insurance they they had if they liked. So many people have lost jobs. So many people are being forced to buy something that they can't afford. Mm -hmm. This is a fundamental question of fairness and, and the reason that we oppose one-size-fits-all, top-down solutions. Um, I think I think 
uh, one of the things that I think uh, people can use uh, with their liberal friends, uh, most liberals out there uh, love unions, and uh, the two, two of the most prominent unions that lobbied for Obamacare, one is Teamsters Union that's headed mm-hmm. up by James Hoffa, and then the other one is the United Food Workers Union. Yep. Uh, they have come out now against Obamacare. Uh, they lobbied for it. Uh, they sent a letter to the president, to uh, Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi, saying, wait a minute, you promised us that we could keep our insurance uh, policies if we like them, and, and we're not going to be able to keep them. And so right now I, I think Obama is just itching to cut a deal to cut unions and exemption now, too. Uh, well, and, and then I think if he does, you have to go to your liberal friends and say, just like Matt just said, is that really fair? Is it fair that he's cut a deal for big, big business? Is it fair that he's cut a deal for unions? Is it fair that he cut a deal for his cronies in Congress? And he won't cut a deal for you? It's, I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's a fundamental fairness issue. And I think that if we point it out in that uh, vein, even the most liberal of liberals can't argue with that. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, well thank every, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And, and I would like to address one question I got uh, before the call started from somebody that's listening. And, and, and all of you have probably heard this because you you work so hard and you fought so hard. And at least one of your neighbors said, was it, was it really worth it to, to fight so hard and to take such a um, unbending stand on the funding of Obamacare? And I, I think my, my answer is unequivocal. The answer is yes. We, we did fight hard, and, and I certainly regret the circular firing squad that was created by, by certain Republicans, but, but that's all past us now. The facts are the facts, and, and the facts on Obamacare are going to come out as people are forced into a system, as they're forced to go to a website that doesn't work, mm-hmm. as they're forced out of the jobs that they have, as they're forced out of the insurance they have, um, these, these are unavoidable truths, and, and I think we're, we're having what the president would call a teaching moment. Um, do we need to learn from uh, the, the things that didn't get done? Absolutely, and I think that's what this call is all about. But uh, I don't. I assume everybody on this call feels like me that um, I'm, I'm not backing down. I'm not swallowing down, and we're going to continue to fight this fight mm-hmm. because our country is too important Amen. to let this stuff um, go on. As dysfunctional as it is, so I hope you'll you'll stick with us, and I hope you'll keep fighting, and I know you will. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Congressman Salmon, for all that you do as well. Thank you. All right, everybody. As you can tell, they did not address the Constitution's origination clause in Article One, Section Seven of the United States Constitution. I will be tweeting Matt Keeve. And his Twitter is M, at M-K-I-B-B-E, if you would also like to address your questions and concerns about it being a tax instead of it being a law. We need to make sure that we keep the pressure on the senators as well as the pressure on the House that they need to follow the law. Until next time, I hope you have a really good day, and I hope that you have enjoyed listening to the conference call.